Welcome to another podcast, another Finding Common Battlegrounds podcast. This is the podcast that's dedicated to finding common ground between the left and the right, between the liberal and the conservative. So there's uh, we have a liberal and we have a conservative. And uh, we, we're going to talk about different subjects and we uh, talk about different things and just talk about our angles, our perspectives. And we try to find what we agree on more and focus. Uh, I mean, we definitely talk about what we don't agree on too, but uh, but it is dedicated to kind of seeing the other perspective and, and at least having a civilized conversation about it. And you know what we always agree on, Tom? Yes. That you should use a bidet after you go to the bathroom. Lux bidets. It is anything anything less is uncivilized. Uncivilized. So civilized conversations demand civilized hygiene practices. Get yourself a Lux bidet. Okay. Um, um, jumping Ryan, into it. Ryan yep. is the uh, Ryan's going to rep- represents the liberal side. If you're new, and I represent the conservative side. Um, today we got, we got two things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Hamas and, uh, Hamas supporters. Uh, we're going to, I mean, we'll inevitably talk about Israel. Um, and, but ba- we're going to talk about anti-Semitism in the U S and, and how that's, uh, how that's being handled and how that's being portrayed. Also, we're going to talk about El Salvador and it is a little bit of an old story, but we're going to talk about this, like how they're handling their crime, and what's happened with their crime in El Salvador and uh, and what kind of the implications there for their they've got a very enigmatic leader and uh, and what what how he's transforming the country and just like what that means. So a couple of good things. So I'm going to start. We're going to start with the um, Hamas story that uh, we're looking at. So that story is, um, so you know, just background. It's basically talking about some of the. Um, protests that have gone on in the u.s and how there's been a lot of anti-semitism in in those protests and uh you know things uh um you know there's a, not only has there been some um some of these demonstrations right there's been the stuff like by any means necessary from the river to the sea the river to the sea which implies palestine will be free which means free of the jews is is to, is the implications there Mm -hmm. um statements like this right it's uh uh there have been a lot um that have been made since the attacks by hamas on israel and then the counter attacks by israel on hamas and so um that is uh and then i guess what's interesting was we had talked about doing this this podcast and then yesterday they had um the presidents of uh, princeton harvard and brown i think could be Yep. At uh, we had a congressional <clears throat> hearing. It was kind of a big deal, and they were mm. kind of grilling them on on what the response was. You know, do they condone these comments? Do they condemn them? And uh, and there has been some fallout from that. Apparently, uh, it's the president of Princeton is. It's like they're going the the chair of the board is going to ask them to step down, um, and uh, <laughs> that's expected to happen. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how this all comes out. But uh, um, anyway, uh, you, wanna, you want a quick aside related to that? Yeah, um, go ahead. So my university, not that I need to bring up my university, but <clears throat> my university got pulled into this hubbub as well. Ryan's, Ryan always brings it back to himself. In yeah, Florida, it's always right? me. It's always like, me in Florida. And it, right? Anyways, at band camp. What was it? Band camp? <laughs> um, so we just made CNN, right, for, for the wrong reasons. There was uh, an incident on our campus before the Hamas Israel or Israel Hamas war even started, right? So before any of this happened, it was actually like way back in early September or something like that. There was an incident involving a Jewish student and a non-Jewish student. And we don't know all the details. There are laws that regulate this, right? So like I can't find out exactly what happened. Uh, But allegedly there were like anti-Semitic slurs um, involved and then a fight. And so we're, my university is also under investigation by the federal, um, I don't know, the, the federal government for some reason, um, tied to this specific incident as though like we didn't do what we were supposed to do or something. So it, 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 I, I've heard some of the details, right? Uh, Cause they came out, uh, the father of the kid who was beat up um, released his letter to the local press. Um, 
it was very one-sided, right? So obviously it was like just that perspective. We haven't seen anything from the other perspective and my university can't release anything because of the law. Uh, it's called FERPA, right? So we can't talk about anybody, any students' um, records, their student records. We cannot talk about that um, to anybody basically, right? That's a federal law. So yeah, I mean, this has happened at lots of different universities. Um, why universities are getting pulled into this, I'm not exactly sure, but it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so just kind of a, it, it's happening not just at like Princeton and Yale and, and Brown and different places, right? It's happening all over. Um, yeah, but there are these, yeah. these, you know, conflicts that are happening. Anyway, but keep going. You're not sure why it's happening at universities? Um, I don't know why it's being highlighted that it's happening at universities. I know why it's happening at universities, right? Like we allow free speech despite what some politicians seem to think, right? Um, yes. Which means we talk about controversial issues. Controversial issues are, are going to come up on campuses. That's that's where we do this, right? So I, I'm perfectly fine with people having heated discussions, right? Like that's part of free speech. This is what we do. Um, but it's not like anti-Semitic actions or even anti-Muslim actions are only happening on college universities. Yeah, but uh, well, it's been, it's, it seems like there's been a lot of, uh, like there was the letter written by the, the was it, and ah, now I know, is it Stanford or Harvard? They wrote the letter and it was the club that was basically saying, this is all Israel's, right? This is Israel's fault. Mm -hmm. And then there were, there was a, and just totally Israel is to blame, da, da, da. And then there was a lot of backlash and there people were asking for a blacklist of those students, right? So they wouldn't hire them. Um, do you, you hear about any of this? I didn't hear about that. I've, I I hate to bring it back to Florida, but again, here in Florida, right? Um, there is a pro-Palestinian student group, right? It's mm -hmm. like an organization on several campuses. And they came out basically in favor of... Um, Gaza, right? So they're basically like, hey, we support Gaza in this. And they did surprisingly. Yeah, I mean, they're pro Palestinian, they're Palestinians, right? Like at the end of the day, that makes a lot of sense. Um, our governor tried to silence them and ban the organizations from campuses. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they said, you know, we support killing Jews. They did not say that, right? There was nothing like that. They were just like, we support Gaza. And our governor's like, you cannot say that. And they're trying to ban them. And so now they're counter suing the governor and they're probably going to win on free speech grounds because the governor was like, you you can't say that you oppose Israel. And it's like, duh, of course you can, right? So yeah, I get it. Like it's messy, it's complicated, but okay. So keep going. I want to get it like the heart of your, why you wanted to yes. bring this because I'm not well, quite sure. Yeah, it, well, here's the thing. You know, if yes, totally. If it is pro Palestine, you know, I don't know about this group or whatever, but there have been mm -hmm. very anti Semitic statements, comments, protests that very much are supporting Hamas and and which which is Hamas's Hamas's position, which is the the extermination of or the elimination of of Jews. Uh, I mean, in in fear in basically is uh they're promoting genocide of like of jews i mean that's the that's kind of a um jumping to the you know the bigger statement you know and it's more nuanced than that but um that's i so i mean like i guess is this is this racist right is this what is this right is this would you call it, well i guess there's the question do you call do you do you lump anti-Semitism with racism? And do you think this is a problem? And do you think that this is uh um that that I mean and and we and then I want to we and then after that I want to get in like what how do you handle it and stuff like that, but like um what how uh, this the, mm -hmm. the I've been uh surprised I, I i don't know i'm surprised but not surprised at some of the protests and some of the language right that have been used by students it's made as a lot of students but the pro I, I'm, I'm talking about the protests in general but there were quite a few that were on campuses and that were and some of the i'd say the more bolder statements were put out by mm -hmm. student groups at universities okay um yeah Okay, let, let, let's wrestle with this. This sounds fun. Um, the first thing that I'm going to kind of respond with is a bit of a question. 
um, because I, I mean, longtime listeners of this podcast will know that I'm very meticulous about words, right? Like right. words matter. I get really semantic. It's annoying. So I apologize to everybody right now. You can all, you know, go get a snack and then come back after we've defined things. But um, what is what does anti-Semitic mean? Right. What does that actually mean? And that, I, I think it's an important term. And I've actually written about this, pulling it into a different context, which is anti-Mormon. Right. So I wrote an entire article on what that means. Um do you want to take a stab at it or do you, are you okay with me trying to define it? So we're working from a common ground because, you know, finding common battlegrounds. But um, so we're working from the same definition because I think that term gets thrown around a lot. Yeah, and I sure. just want to make sure that we know what we're talking about. Probably a lot like racism does, right? Yes, right. And it's, uh, can you criticize, right? Cr can you criticize Israel or Jews and not be anti-Semitic, right? And like, go. where does it cross yes. the line and be like, right. um, man, I hate this Jewish community, like that they're, I think they're encroaching in the West Bank. Is that, that is, was that anti-Semitic, right? Which it right. shouldn't be because you've got to be able to criticize any group or at any group at any time, right? Good. Bingo. And so, yes. yeah, yes. And okay. where, where does that, uh, uh, you know, I, and I think mm -hmm. you'd be, it would be the same as, right? It's like when, I don't I can't, I'm going to, try and think of a technical definition, right? Which would be like, as soon as it becomes in a discriminatory sense, right? That it's it's just based, just based on the no merits of an argument other than that, that they are Jewish, right? I would say you're just merely associating criticism exclusively because they are Jewish and that there's not okay. any merits beyond that. Um, I, I'm prob I'm close to agreeing with you, right? I think I, I would just go one step further. I mean, so you can you could criticize somebody because they're white, right? Just on the grounds that they're white, you could criticize somebody because that would they're be, that would male. be racist, right? But sure, but you could criticize somebody because they're male, just on the grounds of being male, right? Does right. that make you anti-white? Does that make you anti-male? Or does anti really mean you want to commit violence against these people? Do you see what I'm saying? So, I, the, and this is part of the reason why I want to get at a clear definition, because like you said, right, I think it's important to be able to say, oh, I can criticize something, right? I can criticize the federal government. I can criticize Coca-Cola. I can criticize Delta, right? I can criticize lots of things that doesn't make me anti-Coca-Cola, right? So if I'm like, you know, Coca-Cola doesn't do a great job with their recycling, am I now suddenly anti-Coca-Cola? No. But to be anti-Coca-Cola, I think would be kind of what you were saying is like, I'm criticizing Coca-Cola for just existing, right? But that at some level gets to the heart of what it means to be like anti-something is I don't want it to exist, right? I, well, I, I don't know. Because like, I always look at it this way, right? Like there was these jokes when I, when we were back in school, right? And they'd be like, how, um, uh, how do you know if a BYU co-ed is, is like something, something, right? I don't know. I don't remember the, these jokes, but sure. they would throw these around, right? And they'd be a joke that wasn't specific to the school. You could have put anybody in there. You could have put how, how do you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It could have been anybody, but the joke, but they would just apply it. And to me, those are anti, you know, BYU or whatever you're putting in because it doesn't, it's like a blonde joke, right? When it's not mm -hmm. about specifically about being blonde, it's, you know, it's just, you're just throwing anybody in there, like, or, or a woman or whatever, right? If you, you can, there's these jokes, right? That are, you could have flip flopped it to anything. And it's just, mm -hmm. so you're, so that person was basically just criticizing that person, the, the person or group that they wanted to criticize right. Cause it wasn't specific. It wasn't like there was, it wasn't actually inherent associations to, to that group. Right. There wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't talking about anything that was characteristic of the group. Now that's different than like all Asians are bad drivers or something like that. Right. And then that now you're like, okay, well, this is this character. Now is that characteristic true? Right. And then, then you, you can figure that out or not figure it out. Right. And that's like, that that's different. But if you're just like, to me, it's just like, Oh, and, and it's not even like I want to kill you. It's just like you're stupid or anything like that. That's like I think that's anti-Semitic, right? It's just like there's no grounds for it other than you just don't like them because they're Jewish, 
right? And you mm. like, and your criticisms are are because are are simply just they're not attacking anything that actually has merit. Like, man, they didn't get those, you know. Like, maybe I'm going to talk about the West Bank, right? When they're like the, right. they they're not they didn't go through the proper laws and things when they when they bulldozed my house or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's a fair criticism. That's not anti-Semitic, right? Right. Like, that's not fair. You didn't do it right. But it's like, oh, you Jewish scumbag, right? It's like, well, okay, you could have thrown anybody in there and you're throwing a Jew. That's anti-Semitic. That's that's the way. Interesting. I, <clears throat> um, I mean, I would certainly concede that criticizing a group just because, or, or an individual, right, based on group membership or some characteristic that they have, um, not on anything that's meritorious, right? So there's no grounds for doing it. You're just literally doing it on the on some ascribed characteristic that they have. I would definitely call that discrimination, right? Or prejudice. So certainly prejudice or discrimination. For some reason, and again, we could disagree on this, right? Like uh, it would be nice to find common ground on language, but but we could disagree. For some reason, in my mind, I always think that anti-Semitic anti-Semitic comments or anti-Semitic thoughts or something that is anti-Semitic fundamentally requires people to be saying, I want the eradication of this group of people. Mm. Okay. So I, I don't think it's just criticizing them. Right. Um, I think, think it, has it has to, has to go, be like Holocaust related. Um, I mean, it has to be like, I, I dislike these people so much that I want them gone. Right. I don't okay. want them to exist. Okay. And, um, I think I would apply that same like logic, right, to basically any group that could be targeted, right? So if you're going to be anti-black, right, it's one thing to criticize black people. It's one thing to be prejudiced against black people. It's one thing to be discriminatory towards black people. But to be anti-black means I want all black people gone, right? Same with anti-white, anti-Mormon. Right. And part of the reason why I take this position, I mean, I I don't mean to turn this into religion at all, is you'll find people, and this is going again to religion, right? Who will say, oh, well, you were critical of the Mormon church. You're anti Mormon. And I'm like, you know, I literally just, what, three days ago saw a fascinating article about the Mormon church covering up a sex abuse scandal. Um, I think I can legitimately criticize the church for paying a young woman $300,000 to destroy evidence that basically showed that her dad sexually assaulted her for years and the bishop knew about it, right? That is meritorious of criticism. And that doesn't make me anti-Mormon for saying, hey, the church shouldn't have done that, right? I'm not saying I want to kill Mormons. I'm saying I don't like the church doing that. That's bad. That's not a good thing, right? Yet many members of the church would say, you're anti-Mormon for criticizing the church. And I'm like, mm. so I think there has to be, there. It, there's got to be a clearer sense of like, what does it actually mean when you say I'm anti something? I'm opposed okay. to it. Uh, right. Well, I've never heard the word anti-black, but like. Well, neither the, am I. I mean, I'm just making it up, but yeah. Well, that's the thing. But, but racism, like if someone's discriminatory towards a black person, yeah. that's racism, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we can say okay. that's racism because it's um, discriminating against or prejudice, right? Uh, against somebody on the basis of their race, which is a even if they don't it's... want harm or anything to them, but they want to, but they did slight them or they did maybe just, yes, comment, or maybe they even mm-hmm. just did something so nuanced as like lock their door when they pass the street, right? Yeah, we could we could argue that that is, you know, I mean, we've talked about this before. Again, our longtime listeners would understand right? when we talk about like a scale of racism, right, that it's not everybody is on the level of um, white supremacists. Right. So who want to literally wipe out this population? They want to engage in genocide. Right. right. So you can have very minor acts of racism that are much lower on that scale versus I want to, you know, wipe out the entire population. Um, and so I think that's kind I of put, what I'm getting at with anti-Semitism too. Is right. you know, I'm it, putting it, yeah. all those. I'm putting all that stuff into anti-Semitism, right? Because it's like it's the same same concept, right? Black guys walking down the street. Oh my gosh! Or maybe past your car, right? And you lock the right. door, right? It's there. Mm-hmm. The, um, if you the office space, right, where the guy he's rapping, and then the black guy walks by and he locks <laughs> his door. Um, it's this. And uh, anyway, he he's has no reason that 
to be, for that behavior, you know, the guy didn't have a knife or anything. Right. He has no behavior other than he's black, right? That to me, that's totally racist. And that's the same. It's the same. I, that's where I put anti Semitism in is like, say, replace that with a Jew, a Jews walking by and you locked your door. You didn't, you had no cause other than they were Jewish. That's anti Semitic, in my opinion, right? And that's so, like, so I, you know, I, because what what do you call people that are not because like if you think that it's all it actually has to cause them harm or the race harm or something like that then what do you call the people that treat jews you know if some if they lock their door when they were walking mm -hmm. by, what would you call them uh prejudiced discriminatory prejudice toward jews if you would yeah. not call it anti-semitic no because again for me that term anti means fundamentally opposed to right and so if you're fundamentally opposed to a group of people existing right that is a whole different level than like being prejudiced right yeah i, um, I agree yeah so, so it's very different levels right so i mean and and at some level right like we get to define our terms so if you want to work from um, anti-Semitism is the equivalent of racism. So any discriminatory act falls into the camp of anti-Semitism. Okay, fine. We'll work with that definition. I just wanted to make sure that like we were talking about the same thing, because in my yeah. mind, when I hear anti, I hear, I want to commit genocide against this group of people. Right. Right. No, that's, that's fine. We can, we can work from your definition. It's probably better because <laughs> then we have a, we have a way of delineating between these, the, um, the different groups so be, that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Well, the severity, right? Of, yeah. Of, uh, of prejudice. Yeah. Um, they, so like, we, here's the thing. We have talked about racism in, in a lot of different ways. And, you know, I'm the one I'm, I can't, I the only one I can think of a lot is then when we were talking about, um, uh, Lord of the, the rings of power, Lord of the rings, rings of power. And we were talking mm -hmm. about like, if you, you know, there's this diet, this narrative that if you didn't like the rings of power, you were racist because mm -hmm. you didn't like that. There were black elves and there right. was black hobbits and yes. etc. And it was, you know, whatever it was, you know, whatever, but like, this is, I guess the thing that it's, which is, it's a very indirect, very nuanced racism of like, okay, well, did you, or didn't you, did, did I, you know, was J.R. Um, token a racist and it was, it was woven into his story and mm -hmm. therefore I'm racist because I don't, you know, it's like, oh, well, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's very, it's this malaise of like interpretation of like where, where, um, whether you're if that's is that ra racist subconscious right or something like that but right. like <clears throat> what we've seen in the last few weeks is like way it's like when we were talking we used to talk about level one to level nine racism like right. this is like level nine stuff where we're seeing mm -hmm. over here on these campuses that are like very much yes they're very anti-semitic i like this a lot in the sense of like do harm to jews <clears throat> yes. kill them wipe out israel right? right then we're on the same page that's anti-semitism i can't get behind that yes well right. i guess what i'm <clears throat> what i'm saying is like this is a that's uh, like <clears throat> Josh, well, he was a, a former, um, I want to say, I was going to say contestant, a former <laughs> debater on this show. We do occasionally uh, win a bidet. So, you know, yeah. we're just bringing back Lux in here. All good. He was saying, um, well, he was, he, he made the argument that like the left has to be less racist than the right to have that moral high ground. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was like, it was interesting that I, I, I was like, huh, and I've thought about it since. And uh, you know, it's uh, to me, you know, and I was like, maybe that's true. Maybe it's not, right? But um, and that's the, some of the things we've discussed. But like, this is a big problem. Like, in my opinion, like this, like this is like level nine racism. Like, in mm -hmm. my opinion, it's like it is like it's it is 
literally genocidal in their speech. And like that to me, I'm like that. Wow. That's and And, you know, the outrage at Harvard is that, you know, if it, it, that Harvard and these other presidents is that they're very much like, hey, free speech, man, like they 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 should be able to say what they want to say. And you're like, OK, that's great. But like if somebody and, and the, the, the funny things they kept saying, well, if it turned us into conduct, if it turned into conduct, then we or if it was targeting specific students, then we would mm-hmm. we would act at that point. But you're like, OK, if if there was a bunch of white people and they went to campus and they were like, kill all the black people, kill all the black people. And they're like, we're not talking about anyone specifically. We're we're not, and we haven't actually tried to kill anyone. And the campuses would be like, Oh yeah, go for it, man. You know, it's all protected. You know, they are like, there's no one, we know they wouldn't allow that. And two, they, they're protecting students at like that, let's call that racist level one, level two. Like, I don't, Mm -hmm. you said something professor and I didn't like that. And it made me feel unsafe. And like you, you made a a subtle input that you made a subtle statement that implied that I'm less than you because of race. Like, and and they're going after and protecting that, right. The speech Mm -hmm. and stuff. And like, so I find it amazing that they've been one, that they're sort of protecting this and, and, you know, sure, free speech, but you have not been doing it the other way. You have definitely not been protecting it the other way. And two, Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I want to get your take. Like, is this a problem? Are you, are you like, like, that's a big issue. Like in, in my opinion that I would be like, yeah, it looks like we've got some skeletons in our, in our closet at the end of the day. Like, Okay, sorry, one more point and then I'll let you Mm -hmm. reply. But uh, so I was talking with my father the other day and he was we were talking about Trump and and Biden. And and, and I was someone I think my mom made a derogatory comment about Trump and I was defending him. I was like, no, and and, and he was like, well, you just like you like Trump. I'm like, no, I don't like the guy at all. I don't vote for him, this and that. But I'm like, I'm going to defend him when I don't think you're right. And, Mm -hmm. And then I was like, in fact. If I have a very conservative friend, I will go the other way and def- and defend that. Like I'll defend Biden if they're just if they're just Biden bashing, right. and uh, they he's like, well, you're just a contrarian, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not a contrarian. And it's I, a very but, contrarian thing to say. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> and what? No, but I thought about it afterwards, and I was like, no, what it is is I don't like that vert that that one side thinks they're more virtuous than the other that's what i don't like virtue signaling okay and that's where i get upset because like and i think i i like to think that we agree on this from time a a lot of the time is that both sides are just train wrecks Mm -hmm. and that you know there's corruption on both sides there's there's you know there's virtue signaling on both sides and there's like all this stuff's happening on both sides and like it's a problem right and but you're not you're not better than another side and it's like anyway that there's not one side that has that's it, that's incredibly virtuous or more of morally superior right yeah there are different senses of morality and to your point i was listening to a podcast um i think it was the daily from the new york times or it might have been the wall street journal podcast those are, those are the two that i listen to because they have new episodes every day and it, and they're very well done and, and informed um but it was about the Republican debate that happened, I think, last night. Hmm. Um, and Nikki Haley is clearly like the front runner of the second tier. Right? Yeah. The she got, they dog pile. She got, yeah. They just yeah. they hammered her. And which, which they, is sorry, I'm just going to say this, but like, okay. which is basically the present, the presidential debate has basically turned into the who wants to be vice president, the kind of, uh, <laughs> like, right? Kind of. Yeah. I mean, that's like, really you, what it is. None of you are going to be the front runner. No, unless unless he is literally put in prison, and then even then, like or I don't assassinated. Know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, to your point of like kind of wanting somebody in the middle, as they were describing Nikki Haley's politics, I was like, God, I might vote for her over Biden, right? Like that. I'm just so disillusioned with not with Biden's politics, right? But the fact that like he is old, and it's you can see it, right? Like 
it's a problem. It's a yeah. genuine problem. He should not be running for office. And I'm not trying to be ageist, right? Like my parents are about the same age. Right. I don't think they should be president either, right? Yes. My, um, well, my father is more cognitive, has better yeah. cognitive function than he does. And, I, think, and dad, I think that's probably true. My dad's two years older. But <laughs> um, no, and I, I've i heard a lot of talk. There's a lot of things of theories that he will not be the nominee and that there's like, that that's kind of the, the the seeds are being planted to sort of like get that swap rolling. them in at the last second or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Anyway, anyway but... so that was a bit of a tangent. Okay, so coming back to the the main issue. Sorry, I was just like, yeah, I'm I, I'm kind of voting for Nikki Haley right now, and I, you know. A year ago, I never would have imagined I'd be saying that, right? Because I didn't think Biden was going to run. Now Biden's running. I'm like, oh, maybe Nikki Haley. Um, anyway, uh, so on the on this issue, right? Yeah, I think you know, hundred percent. Anybody on the if they're on the left or right, I don't really care where they are, who's calling for um, the destruction of Israel, right? Uh, that's clearly anti-Semitism. I'm not going to be able to get behind that. But I think the argument that you're kind of making is it seems like this is happening primarily on the left and it's happening at specific schools. Now, private universities are are different from public universities, right? So I happen to work at a private university. Um, I'm hearkening back to an incident that happened several years ago at the University of Florida, which is a big, you know, it's a big state school and public school here in Florida. Um, the leader of I want to say it was the leader of the KKK, but it was he was a white supremacist, like a well-known white supremacist. He yeah. was invited by a student group to go talk at the University of Florida. The University of Florida cannot deny him a platform, right? Mm -hmm. However, what they did do is they said, you can come talk here, right? As much as we find your views repugnant and awful, right? You're welcome to come talk. This is a free speech zone. It's public property. Which is admirable. But, yeah. I mean, they have to do this, Right. But they did say, you're going to have to pay for your security because the security costs were in the millions of dollars, right? Um, you know, for a typical speaker, if they're going to drop, you know, a few thousand dollars on security, like they'll do that. His was going to cost millions of dollars to bring him onto campus. And potentially to your point, right, it was because students were freaking out and trying to curtail his right to free speech. Right. They wanted to, right. right. They're going to yeah. try and sabotage the event somehow. <clears throat> exactly. So, so at some level, right, like as, as repugnant as I find his speech, I actually still support his right to say whatever he wants to say. Yes. As repugnant as it is. Yes. Right. Um, in, in that vein, right. I would probably say that I, I don't know the specific speech. Right. So if they're literally saying like, we should kill all Jews. I mean, it's free speech. It's allowed. Um, it's repugnant. It's atrocious. It's awful. If we're going to allow white supremacists to say black people shouldn't exist, I think we have to allow people on the left, if that's who it is, right, saying we want to kill all the Jews, right? Like I, I, that, I, I guess, right. If I'm a free speech you, absolutist, I have to allow both of those, right? Oh yeah, definitely. So that, and, and I'm not supporting either of them, right? I'm not saying either of them are right in saying what they're saying. I'm just as a free speech absolutist, I would say yes. So yeah. I think your bigger question is, it seems like these particular universities are allowing this because it's coming from the left and they wouldn't allow the equivalent coming from the right. Well, yeah. Well, and my bigger argument is I is. It's just, I would think, are you okay with this? Right. And, and I mean, it sounds like you did say it was repugnant, but it's like, it seems like there's a racism and wh whether you call anti-Semitism racism, right. Is, or if it's, it's kind of its own, it's just kind of its own thing. But right. if it, if it is, it's a, it's a cousin, it's a cousin to racism. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that it, that this is pretty bad, I would mm -hmm. say. And that uh, like, that's, um it's just you know it's like okay whites are bad right there's kind of been this reverse racism where like be, being whites this bad thing and and you know or that you can insult whites because they are an oppressor and you're like okay that that's you know in theory that's actually racist what you're saying some of these things right mm -hmm. but you're like but you're like 
okay, you're, you know, victim oppressor, whatever. Right. But like, this is like blatant all out, like genocidal. And like, it's to me, it's just on a whole nother level. And I'm like, that's crazy. Right. That, that like, that's a, that's a problem. I would think Mm -hmm. that like, if tolerance and love are, you know, these, the, the cornerstones of liberal, you know, the left and, and the democratic party, like this is not any of those. (laughs) um yeah and i think we're in agreement right um i i'm reticent to go down this path tom right i re i really am because at some level it's going to come across as though like i'm trying to defend what i've already said are repugnant views right so if anybody's calling for the destruction of israel and all jews i'm not supporting them in any meaningful way right i have relatives who are jewish I love Jewish people, right? I think Israel has the right to exist. So I'm just going on record saying that, okay? So so let's just be clear. Do we want to play a little weird hypothetical game here for a second? All right. Maybe. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, for our listeners, uh, you should have seen Tom's eyes when I said this, right? He's like really skeptical about where this is going. Okay, so let's... Let's just play. This is. Do you want to play a game? Yes. <laughs> this is all hypothetical, right? So this is not real, real world stuff. But imagine um, it's uh, let's say um, the it's the Vietnam War, right? Mm-hmm. And the Vietnamese who were kind of fighting, right, uh, have captured. I don't know, let's say 5,000 U.S. soldiers. And they've put them into effectively an internment camp. You know, it's a prisoner of war camp. And they're they're controlling their lives, right? And their lives are miserable and awful and terrible. They're torturing them on a regular basis, but they control all of the resources that go in, all the resources that come out, right? Like they control these people's lives and they subject them to torture on a regular basis. Um, if someone were to say, and this is all, I mean, some of this did happen, right? But hypothetically, it's these 5,000 Americans who are there, right? And they're being tortured. It's a really awful situation. If um, someone on a college campus, let's say it's Berkeley, right? We'll use Berkeley, uh, said, you know what? What's happening to those Americans is atrocious. And as a result, I do think we should go in and kill all of the guards in those camps. But how would you respond to that? We should kill all the guards. Yeah, kill all the guards. Right. Whether whether they're the ones giving the orders or not, at the end of the day, they are the ones who are causing this horrific suffering of thousands of Americans. We should kill them all. We should kill them right. all. And they were doing a they were doing a demonstration that's like kill the guards, kill the guards, right? Yeah. And uh right, right. And uh the guard the guards are the right. It's like well, that would be that's interesting. Um I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's there there's a lot of I mean they're definitely targeting a specific group. Mm-hmm. But you know, those but that group is not there and it's not um and, and then but that's sort of the that's sort of the the tact that the schools have taken, right? And they were saying, well, they weren't targeting anyone specific and they have the right to talk, to, to say these things, right? Which, and, and here's the thing. I think they're right, right? I actually agree with them. But what- Wait, Agree with who? The school? I, I agree with the school. <laughs> okay. You just be careful because you're like, I agree with it. I was like, you agree with the students? You're saying I agree with the students. Like- <laughs> um, well, I, I, well, you know, and I actually, I, I'm empathetic to their cause, right? Uh, sy- sympathetic, not, but sure. I don't, would never condone what they're saying. And right. um, I, the problem is, is there's the total double standard, right? I wish everyone could say whatever they wanted anywhere on any campus or mm-hmm. in general, right? And uh, but like, you know, this, there's this whole words, uh, spe- you know, what is it? 
words or violence sort of a thing that's a, that's a concept on campuses. I mean, yeah. and that it's totally not allowed over on this side, right? But it's like, oh, hey, free speech. And you're like, oh, did you just dust that off, right? That concept, because there hasn't been free speech on campuses for quite a while, as far as like <laughs> with, 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 you know, people being able to say what they want. Um, and you probably, you probably, I'm sure you've had experiences with that, but um, uh, so I'm, I'm, act, I mean, so I'm actually like, yeah, you should be able to say those things, you know, you get into, right. There's this whole like endangerment and, you know, inciting violence, right. That are, it's like, and the line is, I think the line is clear. You can't incite violence. And so I right. do think it's okay to do that. It, you know, you could even throw this around with Donald Trump, right? He threw, he was saying stuff and he, I don't, what, I, what I'm saying is, I don't think he was anywhere close to saying that we need to kill anyone or there was violence, right? He was just talking about, we need to fight for these things and we need to stand up and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and I think that totally should have been allowed. And we just totally were like, nope, that's inciting violence. Shut that down, right? But we're over here. We're like, whoa, free speech. Well, you should be allowed to say that. And you're like, okay, I think I just, I don't know. It, it seems like there's been a total double standard of allowing people to say these things and then not being allowed them to say it. So like, that's the thing. I think I am in favor of them being able to say it. What I mm -hmm. don't like is that- A perception of a double standard. That's being allowed to be said, but then- like, like I was, I'm surprised, right, that they didn't condemn that when they condemned so many other things that are much less, much less on the other, on the other side. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay. I mean, at, at some level, I think we, we actually agree here, right? Um, I think we're both <laughs> at heart free speech absolutists, right? That at the yeah. end of the day, you can basically say anything short of like, a specific act to go kill somebody, right? So if you're saying, because uh, I would even say like, it's it's fine right now to criticize what Israel is doing, right? So how they're responding in this war where they're literally just destroying Gaza, right? Like they're, they're wiping out buildings, in, entire buildings or entire city blocks, right? Like um, what was the number that I saw recently? I mean, it, it's over 5,000 kids who have killed, have been killed, right, right in, in right. Gaza. Um, I think it's perfectly reasonable to criticize Israel's response to this. Um, am I going to join students calling for the wiping out of Israel? No, no, I'm not there, right? I, I don't think I would ever be there. Uh, but I think it's, it's reasonable to criticize Israel's response. Um, do students have a right to say things again, as long as they don't cross the thresholds that have been established in um, court cases, right? You can't, you know, yell fire in a, um, in a movie theater. You can't incite people to violence. Yeah. Short of doing those things, say whatever you want. Right now, again, we do have to keep in mind the difference between a public university and a private university. My university is private. People don't have the right to just come on my campus and say whatever they want, right? It's a private university. Public universities, they can't stop them, right? So most public universities have specific spots on campus where they're like, hey, this is the public forum, right? Um, you know, you can you can go on sidewalks, I guess, on public universities, but usually they, they prefer that you go to this one specific place and you can say whatever you want. USF, it's right up the street. <clears throat> they have basically a square. They have clergy pastors, right? Like kind of the doomsdayer pastors. They're there every day yelling and screaming and saying their things and everybody just walks by and ignores them, right? Um, so public universities are different. Now, That what makes the Ivies interesting is the Ivies are all private, right? So mm -hmm. Harvard, private university. Yale, private university. Princeton, private university. They get to regulate speech however they want. Uh, and I, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, right? right? But that is the purview of a private university as they get to control it. So even at my university, um, we've had these conversations a number of times, just given different, you know, or uh, kind of groups that I sit on, different um, committees about what's acceptable to bring in as a speaker and what's not, right? 
Um, and a big part of that is as a private university, you know, we're very dependent upon tuition dollars and donors. Do we really want to bring in a super controversial speaker when that could drive away students I and can donors? Your sub donations, right? Yeah, exactly. So, oh, so we're pretty restrictive about who we allow on campus that way. USF, you know, the big state schools, they, they can't, right? If a student group can fund it, can bring it in, it's going to happen. Mm hmm so, so yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Did we answer this? Well, I mean, I think we're in agreement that, well, right. I, I guess well, at the end of the day, I'm like, the left seems to have some demons that they got to wrestle with too. That like, that I don't, I don't think there's a lot of, ver there's, I don't think there's an imbalance of virtue uh, in, in regard to like racism and discrimination. That's an interesting point, um, you know, it, especially if they are like, I mean, you, you did send me one article that looked like they were basically calling for killing Jews. Right. And that, and that wasn't, I don't think problem. that was a, the, the, the things they brought up were not at universities. Right. And, I, right. and I've been targeting universities because there's been a lot from there, but mm -hmm. there have been just protests generally, right. That right. in the streets, yeah. New York, different places. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think we're generally in agreement. Um it is an interesting point to make, right? Like often conservatives get criticized for being racist, for having these prejudicial views. Um I mean, some of my own research has shown that people on the left, it's really religion based, right? But people on the left have their own groups that they don't like. Right. Um, I don't know that either of those. I mean, the vast majority, let, let, let's let's say it this way. The vast majority of people who are right of center. Right. Even if they are like occasionally a one on that racism scale, not a nine, occasionally a one. They're not calling for the um, genocide of black people. Right. They may be slightly more prejudiced occasionally on that like one level scale. And then we flip to the other side. People on the left, they tend to be prejudicial and discriminatory towards like evangelical Christians and fundamentalist religious groups, right? So that right. tends to be like their target group. But I would say it's probably the same. The vast majority of them are like a one or a two on that like discriminatory scale. They're not at a 10 saying we should kill all the evangelicals, right? They're like a one or two, like, I don't like those people. They bug me. I've got issues with them. So I think you're probably right in saying like both of them have their bugaboos, right? They have their, their outsider group that they don't like. And for the vast majority of them, it's like, we don't like them or we, we have issues. You could with probably attribute to like a tribalism, right? And just Absolutely. Like, yeah, yes. it's tribalism, right? And then, and then if I, you go to the extremes, they're the ones who are like nines on that scale or tens on the scale or like kill them all, right? Right. But the vast majority of people are like, meh. You know, like, yeah, they bug me, whatever. And, and I on. know there's some anti-Semitic groups on the right too, right? That, yes, uh, for sure. And uh and that's been a thing, um, which I was like, I don't even know what that is. And then, and then I did have someone approach me and was talking to me, and they were like, "Oh, it's used this." And I was like, "What?" I was like, <laughs> "What are you talking about?" I was like, "I I've never heard someone come talk to me like that before." And uh, as a so, and as a Christian, like, and and they were Christian, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, aren't we like? we're supposed to be like adopted into the house of Israel. Like what, we, like we're trying to get in that club. Like, like that's, that's uh, like, I don't get it. So I don't get what you're talking about. Anyway, it was weird. So <laughs> no, it's there. It's, it's there for sure. It's but, definitely uh, there. Yes. No questions. Um, But, Oh, I would say that this is what I'd say. I would say, I would agree with everything you said, but I also say that the, I mean, there's are issues like, crime which can be you know like uh, the right is hard, hard harder on crime which could be perceived as like anti-black which is black because blacks are more notoriously you know swept up into crime and things like that you could and then uh the right is is typically harder stance on immigration which also could be seen as racist right and it's like mm -hmm. i think these are easy to call out and be like oh you're racist because of it and, and whether they even are sincere or not it's it it wins you so many political points to be like oh you're not against migration you're you're racist right and it's like mm -hmm. ooh, right and it's like 
it's got a lot of punch to it to uh, to condemn someone on the right. And I think it gets you. So therefore it gets used. Right. Sure. And uh, yeah. whether it's true or not, it it's it's an easy it makes for an easy target. I think that's fair. Um, yeah. OK. So I, I don't know that I knew that's where you wanted to go coming into this, but I, I think I think we covered it. Yeah, we got it. We're good. I think so. Okay, let's move on to El Salvador. Yeah. El Salvador, yeah. Give us the skinny um, on El Salvador. What's going yeah, okay. on with El Salvador? Well, yeah, here's the thing. So uh, this is, um, I was, I so there's a video, there's a video that made the rounds uh, just a, a number of months ago, almost a year ago, of uh of these um, prisoners, and uh, these are so basically these are like MS uh, MS thirteen, which is a, a famous gang, and there's another one I can't remember the name of that gang that are like really rampant in El Salvador. Um, in fact, they have like branches in LA, they have branches in New York, and that's and that's something that like that that they've had to deal with is these these um, these satellite gangs at, up in these bigger cities um, of these these gangsters that have just caused tons of crime in El Salvador. Um, anyway, so. Uh, yeah, long story short, uh, it was, I can't remember how many years ago, it was almost like eight years ago, they got this guy, um, he's kind of an enig enigmatic um, young president, uh, Nayib Bukule, Bukule, Bukule. Yeah, Nayib Bukule, um, yep. Anyway, so he got put into office and he's been, he's done a lot of interesting things, like they they totally put the, the monetary system on Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, which was interesting, which yeah. they're actually now profitable, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for a while, it was like, looked like a bad mistake. But uh, uh, but uh, one of the things he's did, he's got really hard on crime. He asked for emergency powers, and then he's just been like way cracking down on crime. And this video is this, they've got these just tons and ton, hundreds of these um, prisoners. They're all in their, in their underwear and they're just shoving them into this, like into these lines. And they're on, they're kind of in like not comfortable positions, right? Handcuffed. And, and they're really just being moved around into this big area and just all like stacked together um, for display, right? To show like what they're doing. And it's, it's, it's a promotional piece to be like, Hey, look, we're rounding up all these guys. And a lot of them are tattooed all over the place and and um they're all like shaven and they're um it's it's really to say it, it, i would say more than anything it's probably a propaganda piece to the people of el salvador to be like look we're cleaning up the streets mm -hmm. and what um so the article that i sent ryan was like since this has happened their crime has dropped by 50 percent um and i think it was murders have dropped by 50 percent actually and 60 60 percent reduction in homicides in 2022 yeah so huge huge like very significant de decrease in crime and they're um and and the people are very happy about it i mean which probably seems understandable right they're happy that mm -hmm. they're, all these people are getting taken off the streets but he has asked for these emergency powers and it's funny um because i was actually i was looking at you know in preparation when i sent that article over i was looking up this guy this um um with this leader and he's actually running he's he so his term ends his second term i believe it's the second term and he's asked for permission to run for a third term which is not part of their constitution and he's been granted mm -hmm. the the right to run and so he actually it's kind of interesting he stepped down he stepped down for like a few months and he put somebody in place and they just just put this like it was like her, his his right hand lady and mm -hmm. she's now uh she's now running the country while he runs for office right he's gonna be like campaigning um so uh and you know and so he might probably will it sounds like he probably will get elected for an additional term so he's on his road to you know the putin uh the you know what is it what did they call caesar um in, uh, dictator imperial uh, imperioso or something like that permanent dictator mm, right uh, went, but anyway so uh, 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 but what so what i wanted to bring up was like Are we, these people, in my opinion, are clearly mm -hmm. trading their freedom for security? Yes. And is that good? And is mm -hmm. that going to come back to bite them? 
I just want to throw that out to you. Yeah. So just looking through this really quickly, uh, I'm just got like Wikipedia up here trying to one, we were trying to figure out how to say his name. Right. So we were looking it up <laughs> before the podcast started and I'm, I'm kind of glancing through this. Uh, their homicide rate has dropped to the lowest of any Latin American country. So that's, that's clearly a perk, right? That's great. But they now have the highest incarceration rate in the world, which is kind of, kind of, I don't want to say impressive. Impressive is totally the wrong number, or the wrong <laughs> word. Um, why it's I'm saying impressive, it's it's significant, but it's impressive because for a long time, guess who has had, guess which country has a had US. the highest? The yeah. US has had the highest incarceration yeah, rate in the world, right? Um, so they must have a lot of people locked up to actually be beating us, right? We've had a lot of people locked up for a long time. And it's really complicated why we do that, right? So really, really complicated. Um, anyway, so so to come to like the main uh, question here, which is, should we trade security for freedom, right? Um, you know, I, uh, yeah, listeners are, you know, they, I'm sure, you know, our listeners hate me anyway. That's fine, right? But, um, you know... It always, I, I always bring it back to like these nuanced arguments and continua, right? So if you have like absolute freedom on one end, let me see if I can get my my camera here, right? So, and absolute security on the other hand, right? I think you're always trying to balance between those two, right? So yeah. I don't think anybody wants absolute security. Absolute security means you're probably going to have no freedom, right? Like none. Um, and I don't think anybody wants absolute freedom because then you have no security, right? So it's a bit of a sliding scale, I would say, right? That you're always trying to balance like how much security do I want without losing freedom, right? Uh, and we can even come back to like our, our, our example that we just gave with the previous topic. Both of us would say that we're free speech absolutists, but we're not, Right. So we allow certain restrictions on free speech because that could cause harm to people. Right. So even on that, we're like, you know, we want a little bit of security when it comes to free speech, but mostly freedom. Right. Um, yeah. Like, I think if we put it on that, like, continuum of a balance in between freedom and security, they're clearly going towards we want the security because, yeah, they were in a really bad spot for a long time. They had the highest murder rates, at least in the Western Hemisphere, right, um, for a very long time. Things were really, really bad. Now they've kind of swung to the other side. My sense is they'll probably start loosening that over a little bit of time. Um where would you put yourself on that continuum, Tom? Would you rather be further towards the freedom side or further towards the security side? Um, well, I I am definitely on the freedom side. Mm. And I think anybody would say they would be on the freedom side. But um, so there's this guy, Thomas Sowell, and uh, he talks about this thing there are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. And ever since I heard that, I was like, love it. Love that idea. And he gives a number of examples, but like, um, but like uh, uh, the Second Amendment, right? It's mm -hmm. like the Second Amendment is, you know, you don't want a tyrant or a dictator. Well, the, the, way, the way you keep your government in check is you arm your, your the, you know, um, the public. Your, the public and uh you know and, and there's history right like russia rounded up all their guns and like look where they're at right and uh there's, there's a number of these cases now there's a trade-off right we have mass murders we have people kill themselves mass right? shootings all the time yes. and it's like is you, you have to look at all these situations and be like there it, it's what we talk about a lot where there's no solution there's no like obvious solution right and then this is like this is life in, in it, and then i've come to know this more and more it's like life is messy and there's not like oh yeah it's at it, there are almost no absolutes right you you <clears throat> always just do this or you always just do this it's like no no it's always something gray area in the middle mm -hmm. and in these cases there's trade-offs right and it's like it's exactly what we we're talking about a minute ago there's free speech 
we value, but there is a trade-off, right? And it's that people say awful, horrible, horrendous things. And yep. and they they will criticize you and you won't like it, right? And these are trade-offs of having a free democracy. And uh the these are the the down the, the, the you know the downsides, the trade-offs to them. Right. And so yeah, I I am I believe you should be free that we should be free and but but there are trade-offs to it and i think if people aren't willing to pay those trade-offs then you turn into an el salvador i think and Mm -hmm. when i you know and i'm not going to get into specifics but i think like a personal a certain personal amount of personal accountability um i don't i would say righteousness but i would just say like you know being active members of society that upstanding, you know, doing the best you can, trying to do what's right in society, right? And then I think if um, those are the trade-offs of of a free society, and if you don't do that, you yeah. then and, and here's the thing, the U.S. right? It's like um, 9/11 happens, mm-hmm. right? They we passed the Patriot Act, right, which gave license for the government to spy on us and uh, and to do. Um, surveillance on us and they still do right Mm -hmm. and that's one of many and that's a big bill but there's been lots of other bills that have slowly just kept passing that have that are in you know um eroding our freedoms on our yes uh, yes, on our personal freedoms and we are allowing that to happen and i think that's partly because we're we're kind of a messed up society right now but uh uh, we're not paying the trade-offs. That's that's what I'm getting at. And uh, hmm. interesting. Yeah. Anyway, and so um, I think. Go yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, just go ahead and finish. I've got some thoughts. No. I, so uh, that's what I. So you know, there was um, uh, Fr- Franklin. Um, what? What? Why can I not think of this first name? Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Yes. You know, he's he's I think attributed with the quote, uh, if a society chooses um security over freedom, they will get they deserve neither and get none. Right. And uh I uh totally believe that. And I think I think the El Salvadorans are gonna get themselves a dictator and uh and and then will it be okay? You know, I don't know how that's gonna turn out, but typically you you usually might have, you know. I think what the what happens with dictators, right, is you might get a good. They're just like kings, right? You get a you get an okay one, and then you get a crappy one, and things mm-hmm. go bad, and then uh, yeah. and then you get another crappy one, and things get worse, <laughs> and uh, and you don't get to choose. Therefore, it's sort of like, oh, right. suck. this sucks. Yeah, and there's bad. inevitably some abuse of power, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so a quick aside because I think it's interesting, and then I, I want to again, play my hypothetical games because this is what I do. And it's, you know, it's in, yeah. Um, for those who are just listening, you could, you missed Tom's smirk where he was like, oh boy, Ryan's going to do yes. one of his games again. Um, I happen to be on a call today uh, with a former student, right? Graduated like a decade ago, uh, who now lives in China. And I was asking her some questions uh, about like, you know, why, why are you, why do you want Cause she's, she's like, wants to stay there for a little while. And I was like, why do you want she's to stay Chinese. in China? She's not. No, she's from the oh. U.S. She's from Florida, oh. she's from Tampa, Florida. right? But yeah, huh. but she's living there. And I was like, you know, what's it like, right? Like, yeah, what, can you talk what's freely? The yeah, like what, yeah. what's going on? Because I'm like, you know, Xi Jinping is a bit of a dictator right now. And it's a right. it's police state, right? Um, and then I, I kind of paused and I was like, crap, can I even ask this? Like, we're on a okay. Zoom call, I know, but like, <laughs> is this okay, right? And she said, oh, because we were actually on Zoom. She said, I, I can't even use Zoom in this country without having a VPN. So we're, I'm on a VPN, I'm safe. And I was like, oh, She's like, okay. but I could be killed for using yeah. a VPN. <laughs> so, so just, you know, just putting it in perspective. Okay, so the, the hypothetical that I wanted to play is I wanted to try and get a sense of like where you really do fall on this freedom versus security kind of continuum, right? Right. So um, let's just start with um, cameras, right? Um, Should stores be allowed to have cameras to track people? Oh, uh, 
Right. So you're, so you, okay. I'm asking you. Yeah. yeah you're asking I, I, me. I'm just like, I, I want to run through this like continuum to see like, where does Tom actually fall? I want to see. I'm just kind of playing yeah. this. Okay. The, here's the thing. I am, yeah, I'll play along, but it's like, what, what do I want to have happen and, and versus what, like, what should happen, you know, mm-hmm. versus what, right. what the reality is. Because the thing is, we don't live, you know, we're the, the point I was trying to make is we're getting less and less free all the time. Mm-hmm. And so it will uh, necessitate the need for security. Right. And it's like, I, so I had, uh, we just had two bikes stolen from our mm-hmm. um, driveway and we have mm-hmm. a kind of like, uh, it's up on a hill and kind of right, back yeah. a little bit. And so you had, you had to get up in there to get our, to get our bikes and we just leave them, we just leave them out, but they're kind of in a place where you couldn't really, we wouldn't see it anyway. <laughs> I, so I was like, oh my God, I was like asking around. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I think they got stolen. And I went, I got, and one of the, there was a bike over there that had a flat and mm-hmm. it was my bike anyway. So I fixed it and then I had it out there and two days later it disappeared. And it was like, I swear they were waiting for me to get it fixed. And they're like, oh, he fixed the flat. Let's go take that bike too. <laughs> and um and I was like, that's what I knew. I was like, okay, that wasn't a fluke. Someone's definitely stealing these, right? Right. And then, uh, so I set up a Google Nest camera and uh, I just put that in uh, like last week. I installed it and it, you know, it's like, I got a light, it turns on and now I have the app. And like, I hate, I actually hate that I have to have a camera in my house, <laughs> but I was like, this is the thing, right? So um, should stores be allowed, like private stores be allowed to have yes. cameras in their store? Yeah, I think they should. I mean, like, okay. they should definitely have the right to do it. Yes, for sure. Okay. It, recognizing that every time you go into a Target, you are being recorded. Yeah, yeah. Right? But but you're okay with it. Again, private stores, that's fine. Right. Right? Um We'll eventually get. Do you have a list here? Do you have a? Well, I'm just. just I'm I'm just making this up as I go, right? right? But I'm. I'm trying to start at like the the kind of lower end of Mm -hmm. like their private institutions. They're protecting their profit margins effectively by having these cameras, right? So that seems like probably more acceptable. But at the same time, like every time you walk into one of those stores, you are being recorded, right? And that's true for basically any corporation these days, right? Any right. retail outlet and, you know, uh, even wholesale outlets are recording you all the time. Yeah. Um, and honestly, they'd be stupid not to. Right. I mean, it makes sense, right? I get it. I get why they're doing it. Okay. So l- we've kind of conceded like stores, they could probably be allowed to do this. Tom's willing to grant and like he's giving up some of his freedom right? To allow these private corporations, even if they're publicly traded, but private corporations to protect their margins, right? Right. So, sorry, I want to throw in the caveat, (laughs) the caveat that the stores wouldn't need to if people were, if the the level of, you know, theft or shrinkage, right, was acceptable. Mm -hmm. Uh, If they were more, if people were more honest, they wouldn't need to right and 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 to to go further on this is like there's this whole thing where they're locking up merchandise right this Mm -hmm. is a big thing in san francisco and it's coming like um i just noticed and i took a picture of it that they lock up the wire the copper wire at the lows um i've never seen that before just saw it last week and they keep it in a cage and so you got to ask to and they'll open it up for you um that's no, they're only they're not doing it because they want to do it they're doing it because right. they have to do it right and mm-hmm. I, that's the point i keep getting to is like it's i do i want them filming me no but is it their right yes but they wouldn't do it if they didn't have to right they're doing it because mm-hmm. they have to do it because we right. are not being honest enough as a people right and I, i'm i'm ignoring the whole issue of like poverty and why people might do this anyway right but l- let's ignore that we're just going to play the little hypothetical game okay so private corporations for profit entities they can do this what about a dmv so this is a government entity mm-hmm. should they be allowed to have cameras yeah yeah There's you're okay with that so this is the government now filming you when you right. go into the dmv or you know Something like that, or even a public school. Should public right. schools be allowed to have cameras? I think I'm fine with that. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're, we're going to move three more steps. And again, I am just making this up off the top of my head, right? So three more steps. Um, next one would be um, 
private homes, right? Now you just installed this. Again, I get that you hate that you feel like you have to do this. Yes. But you did it. Yeah. Right. Um, which is going to lead to the the subsequent step, right? Which okay. is so inside the home. Is that where you were getting? Or... Oh, either way, right? Yeah, either I way. think that's that's another level of. So you're you know, okay with the outside the home, inside yeah. the home? I don't know how I'd feel about that. I, well, I don't know. And I can even tell you, like, so I, I have had ring cameras for quite a while, right? Uh, part of it is I'm a geek and, like, I used to record things, like, make videos out of it because I thought it was fun. But we have three, right? We started with a ring doorbell and now we actually have one on each corner of the house uh, with the ring doorbell. So that's three outside cameras. We have one inside, but the way you can set it up is the only time that it actually is recording anything is when we're all gone. Right. So mm -hmm. when we're outside of the house is when it records. So mm -hmm. if somebody were to break in, then we could record them inside the house, but otherwise it doesn't record anything. Right. So, um, so that's what, that's what ring told you. <laughs> uh, conveniently, I mean, maybe they're recording things. Right. And that's fine. <laughs> and if they've got lots of pictures of me walking around with my penis hanging out, like props to them, <laughs> Amazon, you can watch those videos all day long. Have a good time. Uh, They'll show them to you when you run for Congress. Like, <laughs> hey, Ryan. <laughs> Put them online. No one wants to see that <laughs> crap anyway. I don't even care. <laughs> um, okay. So that, that's that one. Uh, the, the next step on this, uh, I don't know if you'll get this, right? Because you've only got the one camera, it's through Nest. I've had two requests by the local police department for my ring camera footage. Oh, uh, interesting. Right? Should we allow that? Well, if they requested it, I yeah, I would totally give it. Would I let them have access to my camera whenever they want? Remote access? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay, but... so that's 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 a step too far, right? Yeah. But what you you basically said is like the police, you know, should be allowed to request ring camera footage, right? So there was a break in like two houses down or something uh, around the corner, and they knew roughly the time when it happened. My ring camera for my doorbell is not set up to catch the street, right? Because if it was, it would catch every car that goes by. And you can set the zone. So I've set it so it's just this side of the street. So it doesn't catch those. So they asked mm -hmm. for it thinking maybe I would have a picture like a video of the car. And I didn't, right? So I actually checked the footage during that time frame and it didn't even turn on, right? What so my camera. So you mean it won't trigger and turn <laughs> right. on? I see. Yeah. Okay. So you can set like movement zones, action yeah. zones basically in the camera. And only if something moves into that zone will it be like, oh, there's action here, right? And mm, then it turns nice. on and records. So I set it very specifically because it, it's facing the street, right? Well, so you don't, yeah, you don't want to trigger every two minutes. Yeah. Exactly. So every car that goes by would be triggering it. So I, I actually literally designed it so it's not doing that. So when they asked for it, I was like, hey, I'm happy to give it to you if it would help. But literally, I recorded nothing during that six hour window because mm -hmm. no one was coming. It, it was like, I, I want to say like 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. on a weekend or something like that. Right. We didn't even go outside. So there was literally nothing on my footage. Um, there was another one where I did have one little clip that I did send to the police that I was like, maybe this so is they, helpful. But they came so. and asked you. You went and reviewed through it. And then you're like, no, I don't have anything. Yep. So yeah. and they, it was just an email. Right. So they can email yeah. me and be like, hey, are you willing to do this? So you're OK with that? Yeah. Well, asking. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So now we get like. Two, the last two steps. Um, here in Tampa, uh, the police have set up um, this system, right, that detects gunshots, right? So they have basically microphones all over the city on these big tall poles. And it, you know, it, just like an Amazon Echo can detect certain sounds and recognize that that sound is words, right? And then it translates it. It's just an algorithm. They've developed algorithms that can detect gunshots. And because they have these all over the city, they can triangulate it to within like 50 feet of where the gun actually went off. And so I within- I have not heard of this You've not heard of this? this oh, no. Is this crazy. is crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, I wouldn't, I don't know that it's widespread, but it's in a lot of major cities, right? So here in Tampa, they have it. So they can, within 30 seconds of a gun going off, they can basically triangulate the location and send police almost instantly. That is interesting. Are I've you okay with are you okay with that kind of oversight? Uh I don't I hate it. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> really? Yeah. I hate that. So you it, you don't want them to be allowed to be able to know when gunshots go off. 
yeah, no, I don't. Here's the thing. I, no, I hate that. I hate it. And uh, like, that's, yeah, I, I think it's, it's very invasive. Right. And what if I'm shooting something in a gun in my backyard and it's like, or whatever. What you're allowed to do. I mean, it legally, I can have a firing range in my backyard in Florida. That is totally legal. Right. Yeah. So they may send police. Right. But I'd just right. be like, I, I have a, I have a license for my gun. Right. I have a permit or whatever, and I'm shooting in my backyard. Right. Like as long as right. it's safe. Well, yeah. And you, I've got nothing to hide, so that shouldn't be a problem. Right. And that's, that's, mm -hmm. the, you know, the big arguments for cameras and all this stuff. Right. If you, right. if you're a law abiding citizen, what would you care? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, well that this kind of technology has a, has a habit of always turning against people, right? Is it just that's what happens inevitably? Okay, so we we found a line where Tom's like, no, and that's yeah. recording gunshots. The last one that I was going to give is just like public cameras, right? So cameras in public that are run by the police or the government, right? Yeah. No, that's um, that's Orwellian in my. Okay, opinion. so you would draw the line there, like you... not allowed. That's Orwellian, right? You're you're yeah, with yeah. me, yeah? Okay. Um yes i mean right? like that's what I, china I, has right now yeah 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 they had i mean in, in, incredible and i don't know if you maybe the we talked social about scores this and all that crap they do have the social scores but there was a, a um a bbc journalist who went over there um just to run an experiment right because they have the most well-developed like system of cameras in the world and basically what they did is he he tried to challenge him right he said i'm going to try and get lost and let's see how long it takes you to find me oh, to find it was him. less than okay. it was like five minutes Right. They found him five minutes and they had police come and get him. Right. That's how Orwellian it is. Right. Like, yeah, they can, they're tracking you everywhere. And police come and get him. Wow. That's <laughs> how about like an attendant or something? <laughs> yeah. Please come get him. Throw him into a truck. We never yeah. saw him again. <laughs> it works. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So. So I, I, the reason I wanted to run through that, right, is it's pretty clear you are willing to make some trade-offs, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. Or security, right? Um, granting, like giving up some of your freedom, right? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. It's not like everyone in El Salvador is a bad person, right? Sure. But there, yeah. but there was enough that mm -hmm. it got out of, it was out of, it was out of control, right? That's, right. I will, I mean, I think that. I think everyone would agree it was out of control. And that's that's the, that's the spectrum that right? that we're all on we're on this 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 gradient and as it gets darker and darker in our society mm -hmm. it will tolerate, you know, and and will do more and more, you know, as we see the like the kind of the deterioration of our society, it's like yeah, I had to put a camera up, right? Or I just keep getting crap stolen from my yard. That's Am I thrilled about that? No, absolutely. I hate it, but like I had, I had to, right. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's, um, I, I don't, you know, that like, do I participate in those things? No, but like I live in the society and it's getting, in my opinion, it's deteriorating and we're, we're, our values are deteriorating. And therefore we're, we're going to be giving up more and more unless something changes. Uh, would you agree with that? Um, I mean, crime rates fluctuate, right? So I, I don't know that I would agree with the idea that society is deteriorating. Um, I would agree with the idea that it would be, it would be ideal if we didn't have to have cameras at all. Right. Yes. Um, because, yes. because everybody's law abiding and that's fine. Right. Yes. So I, I right. don't know that I would agree with like society's going to, to hell, but, but does the fact I agree with the, the general premise, but the fact that we have to do that, doesn't that, isn't that a litmus test for society and you know that we're um well and, and i would say and retailers having to i mean they're changing their tactics right now and like mm -hmm. i don't know if you saw the article that um it's walmart walgreens and someone else are getting rid of the self checkout they're like yep nope we lost way too much money doing that and so really all this down yeah Oh, no, I didn't see that. So they're um, going to try something else. I don't know what they're going to do. Right. And they're trying to save money in, in some ways. Uh, you know, uh, tricky. Um, you keep saying, like, we have to do this. You know, at the end of the day, you don't have to put that camera up. You still lose bikes, right? So you're doing it with a very specific intention, right? Um, yeah, we had it. We actually had a home invasion. Like, we weren't here, right? But somebody broke into our house. And ever since then, we've had an alarm system. Um Am I super worried about it? 
Not really, right? We don't leave stuff out for the most part. Our house is, you know, we've got cameras and whatever, but our house is pretty locked up. I mean, we, um, that said, right, I mean, we'll, we'll go back. There's like a throwback, right, to Morgan. Um, you used to walk into my parents' house like mm -hmm. any time of the day because oh, yeah. we never lock the doors, right? I'd like, walk in, I'd go never. eat, I'd open the fridge, I'd get some food and then <laughs> and go up to the loft and see where you guys were doing. <laughs> um. Do you leave your house unlocked like that now? Um, you know, I, Megan does not for sure. She doesn't. Right. She's not comfortable with that. I probably would if it was up to me. But really, um, but my parents up in Mountain Green, they don't. They, they don't lock their door. Do they? They lock their don't door? lock their. They don't lock the door. They will at night. They lock it at night now. Um, and they, but my dad leaves the key in the car, in the garage. Um, which is probably fine because the garage is down, but he dug, he does occasionally leave it in the driveway with the key in the car. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't even do that when I was growing up dead, but um, <laughs> he was like, yeah, I mean, it's so it, it's definitely not, I would say not as deep. It, it's got, you know, so it, yeah, it, it's changed. I uh -huh. would say. So they do lock their doors at night and they do. Um, yeah. Yeah. They don't keep their, cars unlocked in the driveway except sometimes they leave the keys out but yeah whatever yeah i mean i i i would like to think your description is accurate right um times have changed such that even where we grew up in mountain green utah people lock their doors now right yeah. and that was not the case um then i still remember my mom freaking out one time because she was pretty sure somebody was in the house um, and she was there alone and it wasn't somebody she knew, right. It wasn't one of the friends of one of the nine kids in the family. It was some stranger just walked into the house and stole something. Um, so she did call the police one time, but you know, it was, it was a different time, different place, right. I mean, I do live in a city with 3 million people in it and you know, it's a little bit different environment. Um, you know, and that was 40 years ago, <laughs> right. That was a long time ago. Um, Things have definitely changed, right? Uh, there are still places, I think, where people do leave their houses unlocked, right? Yeah. Um, so there, yeah, things have changed. Um, probably not for the better in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I would agree with you. I don't know that it's terrible, terrible. I mean, but I I'm not saying, yeah. yeah, it's apocalyptic. I'm just saying. Right. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I think we're it's agreeing, kind of but it's 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 going in the direction we don't want it to go. Right. Because would I prefer to not have to ever lock my doors because I'm just not worried about it? Right. Yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be great. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, I did mention, you know, I've got three ring cameras, right? So, like, one in each corner and then the one in front. Um, what was it? Uh I think it was it was this week, right? I was at work. Do, do you, have you oh. used? Why did you put mm -hmm. that in? And have you used it? Like, ha has it prevented something? Do you think? Um, so one of the you know the the um, porch pirates, right? The people who mm -hmm. steal your packages because I yeah. I don't you know I I shop on Amazon all the time. I mean, I go to the grocery store for food, right? That that I will go and buy, but everything else, like now, it's just Amazon. Um, that's actually really convenient to have that ring camera because no one has ever stolen a package from us, right? Mm. So I'll have packages sit out there all day long. They get delivered in the morning and we're all at work, right? Um, and it'll just be sitting there and that ring camera is right there, right? So if somebody comes up, I'm going to record them. I know that's, exactly what That's not doing. why you put it in. It's just been a, a That's a perk. Yeah, a that's, perk. that's definitely yeah. a perk. Um, yeah. No, we started with the ring camera, one, uh, because I needed a doorbell. Right. So I didn't have a doorbell. And so Seems I was like, like okay. yeah, and it wasn't even wired in to have a doorbell and that it's just all battery and yeah, Wi-Fi. And a lot right? of people get those, but the cameras on the sides, why did yeah. you get so those? The, um, the cameras on the sides, I wasn't really worried about crime. Right. Um, one, you know, we do lock our house up. We have an alarm that if somebody got in the house, it would go off anyway. Um, I've Your had neighbor, some babes. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my neighbor, Rich, who's 67 years old, son babes, Your right? Gut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real um, nice. Yeah. So both of my neighbors actually, right. Have at different times asked me for footage from my front doorbell camera. 
Mm. Right. So the one on that side over there, he does some construction. So he puts in fences, right? Somebody broke into his truck one night yeah. and he was like, ah, you know, do you have any footage? And I was like, my ring doorbell camera that I only had the ring doorbell camera at that time. It only covers like this, you know, this window of right in front of it. Right. It doesn't go all the way over to either right. side. I didn't have anything. Right. Um, and I wanted to put in motion detecting lights anyway. Mm. So there was a big cell on ring cameras and they have the ring cameras with the lights. Right. So I was like, mm, why don't I just do this? And then I can actually control them and I can set everything. Right. So it was, you know, it was probably three times as much as just getting motion detecting lights, but it wasn't that much and wiring. It was actually pretty easy. So I was just like, let me just do that. So I ended up just putting them in and they're effectively motion detecting lights. I rarely use the camera for anything, but now, right. The one particularly on that side would be able to get a much better sweep of what's going on. Hmm. So, so I could do that, but eh, they're effectively just motion detecting lights. That's all. You don't, so you're, you're saying that didn't, <clears throat> Like it wasn't a security conscious decision. It was just, it was not for, for those. Reasons. Really, it was just like lights, right? They turn on automatically. And mm -hmm. since I was already paying for um, with Ring, right, which is owned by Amazon now, I'm not trying to do an ad for them, right? It, Ring, if you want to sponsor the show, you're going to have to compete with uh, Lux Bidet, just yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, if you can. Yeah, if you can, because no one can compete with bidets. End of story. Um, I already pay for um, the monitoring service through Ring, which is like 10 bucks a month. It's relatively inexpensive. I don't know how they can afford that. But it, basically, that stores all the footage on their um, servers, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how many cameras you have. Oh, so nice. if you no, have... I if, yeah, Wasn't so I could, put, I could put 50 cameras on my house, right? And I'm still paying 10 bucks a month for unlimited storage of all of the footage. So just putting those cameras up didn't cost me anything more than just putting the camera like buying the cameras and installing them so yeah i was just like mm -hmm. why not right this is not it's not going to cost me any more for the service yeah cool so mm. anyway well, interesting yeah um what's our big takeaway on this right that we all are kind of balancing between security and freedom well here uh, here's my thought process is mm -hmm. i believe you cannot be free society unless there is a certain about amount of self-discipline, self-moral um, behavior, right? And a society that gets away from that inevitably will have to embrace security. And uh, and it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean they're in prison. I mean, like they're subject to a dictator or anything like that, mm -hmm. but like some amount of freedom is going to be lost it, it, just to some degree. And it's probably the amount of freedom that... The, that the society, you know, individuals within that society decide to, um, uh, sorry, the, the, the amount of like morality that they decide to heed to is the amount of security they will have to embrace. I think, I bet it's, I, I would say it's probably completely coupled, but, um, and, uh, and so I do feel like, you know, there's a, there's a decay of our values and, and yeah, it's not, it's not like, oh, and everything's going to blow up tomorrow, but I think there's just a steady decay of values mm -hmm. in our society. And I think that that will inevitably lead to a loss of freedom. And I don't think, I think those two are inseparably connected. Like you could, you know, you go to Congress and they talk about freedom all the time. Uh, you will be free, be free. And I'm, I don't care what you say. If the people on an individual level mm -hmm. don't make changes in their lives, then we can't. And if the like you can't have free pe like people that are like, you know, I, I, I think of like the 1950s and you got the mechanic who's getting off work so he can go to his caucus meetings and vote on his you know people that are in there they're doing their civic duties and they're like they're in like four or five um different civic clubs right mm -hmm. because they're so in, in in their community you can't have a dictator over the people like that they will in they will just um they they will outshine it i don't know what you want to call it, but like they will they will uh you will not be able to keep them uh subject to anything and whereas the other side is yeah a person who's all in for themselves and completely self-absorbed they will like if uh, you know enough of society is like that it's inevitable that's my take on it 
And I think, and I, I think what we've been highlighting is that with that decline of society, there's inevitably these changes, these secure, we are embracing security slowly on a, as a, as almost like a slippery slope. I wish I could strongly disagree with you, Tom. Uh, I worry about um, declining morality too. And um, I, I would complicate it in a variety of different ways, but the idea of kind of rampant materialism and consumption and self-absorption and not caring about civic engagement and civic responsibility does bother me. I, th mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm genuinely bothered by that um, for a variety of reasons. So I think we, we agree. Tom, we need to I stop agreeing. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try and get Josh back on here so we can at least fight occasionally. Right. Our <laughs> podcasts are, are these love fests. We're like, I agree with you, Tom. I agree with you, Ryan. I agree with you, Tom. Yeah. That's fine. That's good. It's good conversations, right? At least we're, we're having good conversations. No, uh, anything you wanted to add? No, I think that was sort of my, that was my, Soliloquy on the whole thing. Cool. My, my okay. Quantification. I like it. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, we'll be back probably in another month. Uh, we're busy, but uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. -bye. Uh, Tom, look, we don't always agree when it comes to politics, um, but if there's one thing that we do agree on, it's that there's only one way to clean up after going to the bathroom, and that's with a Lux bidet. Listen, I've been using bidets forever, all right? And Lux is the best, all right? So, I mean, I've got like the little squatty potty thing and the bidet. It's like a whole experience. It's it's actually, it's probably one of the highlights of the entire day. But like, it gets me clean and it gets me ready to uh, talk politics in a civilized manner. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Um, Every time that I use a toilet, it doesn't have a bidet. When I go to a friend's house, you know, I just don't use their toilet, first of all. But uh that's about as uncivilized as it gets. So uh, civil conversations demand civil hygiene practices. That's why everyone should get a bidet. And just to be clear, right, we, we want to make, make it clear. Listeners can get their own Lux bidet with 10% off by ordering at LuxBidet.com and using our promo code FCBG10, Finding Common Battlegrounds 10. Uh, and the last thing that we want to say, uh, Lux is supporting this podcast. Uh, but they don't side one. They don't support one side or the other. They support civil conversations and clean butts. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at findingcommonbattlegrounds.com.